to Emily Kate Made This. I am Emily Kate and I'm coming to you from Berlin in Germany. So welcome. Welcome back to anyone who has watched previously and hello to anyone who is new. This is primarily a knitting and sewing podcast. Well I'm sure at some point there'll be other bits and bobs here and there. Not sure which episode I'm on. I think 13. <laughs> I really should have checked but hey ho. I actually have recorded this already once, but I was rushing through because I was so excited that I was, for the first time, alone during this whole time I've been recording. My husband's always been here and I was so excited that he went out and I could record, but I only had 9% battery and I tried and I failed. So now he's back. He's actually right next door, so I'm still distracted, um, but we're going to give it a go. Battery is charged, all is well. So, let us begin. This is my finished object, and what I'm wearing, obviously. This, you, if you've watched previously, you've seen before. Um, it's taken me maybe a couple of months, I think, give or take, to knit it. It's the... Wild Posy Jumper by Melody Hoffman and it's the Flora version. If you buy the pattern there are two patterns within it. So one has the lace and one doesn't. This one has the lace, obviously. <laughs> I'll try and insert some um, b-roll but this is the pattern if you can see it. Hopefully it's focusing. It is knitted in Plutolopion. Ivory beige, this one. And I believe I knitted the, I knitted the smallest size and I went down a needle size or half a needle. It was, I think, recommended 5.5 millimeter and this is on five millimeter. I knitted a tulip pullover also by Melody Hoffman and also in Flutilobi and I got the right gauge on that. So I haven't actually tested tested. I actually haven't measured the gauge on this one, but I'm assuming it's correct. Maybe I will um, measure it later and have a look. But it fits, so that's good. I have discovered that despite the fact that I love um, yoked sweaters, not entirely sure they're the right style for me with all this extra fabric all the time. Because I'm so small, I think it drowns me a little bit. And raglan sleeves are probably a better shape on me but I don't care I've got a good bazillion patterns for um, yoke and I love them so I, I don't care <laughs> um, yeah also the color I went with this one because Melody made it in this color and I thought it was really beautiful and I like that you can mix and match it with different um, colors easily not entirely sure it's my Color. like it's quite pale and I'm quite pale but you tell me <laughs> I I think I'm more of a color person like I can I can take color like um, any color really darks or pastels I think are okay but whites and pales maybe not I had a bit of a faux pas but it's not anything major I basically just started the sleeves and just knitted down and then I just completely forgot to do any decreases and then I did them at the end as per the pattern and it made a bit of a weird shape but you don't really see it so that's good then you have this the same pattern you have on the yoke but on the sleeve and then you do the ribbing and for some unknown reason I just did the ribbing didn't think about changing the needle size to go down um, but I don't think it's too bad, like, I mean, I think, I think it looks fine, but I should have done that if I was following the pattern correctly. Also did not do the tubular bind off because Plutolope, tubular bind off, don't, just, no, <laughs> let's not go there. And I did speak to a couple of people who had done it and they regretted it and they found it very stressful. So I'm glad I did not do that. I did go down and actually a ridiculous amount of needle sizes. 
I went down to something like 3.5 for the um, hem and I have no idea why but hey ho <laughs> it is a little bit tight um, but it's not a too tight in a restrictive way just if you feel the fabric it's a bit but other than that, I like it very much. Um, what else? I don't think I can say anything else about it, to be honest. I enjoyed knitting it. I did decide I wouldn't knit with Plutolope for a long time because I was, I, I was kind of, I want to say fed up, but that feels too strong. Like, I was just a bit done with having this very delicate yarn that you have to carry around very gently and place down and gently so it doesn't break and I just wanted a break but I've cast on with Plutolobi again so <laughs> obviously that's not gonna happen. I have many projects actually, I have some more socks that use up the leftover of this. I have another jumper using it so you'll be seeing Plutolobi on this channel for a while to come. <laughs> um, what else? Oh and the dress I am wearing. You can't see it, I'll try and insert a video somewhere. It's the Lowest Stress by Tasuti Fabrics. And if you're not interested in sewing, I've got some chapters below so you can see where you can skip forward to if you just want the knitting and not be talking about sewing. Um, yeah, this is my third Lowest Stress. My first one I knitted in muslin or double gauze fabric. Came out a bit too big, but it was also my second dress, I think, that I ever made. And I don't know what I was doing with the double gauze. I, I think I was ironing it out flat and then I was sewing. It doesn't really matter. It came out too big. It's fine to wear around the house, but not really to go out in. Um, my second dress, which I'll try and insert the picture. I love this dress. Fabric was a nightmare, but that was because I hadn't learned about uh, thinner needles. Thinner fabric equals thinner needles on the sewing machine and then everything is fine. But I didn't know that then and it was all bunching up and all coming undone and I was pulling my hair out with rage but alas those days are over, I now know this and using that knowledge I used it on this fabric and I haven't got anywhere in this apartment that I can put my camera and walk far enough back that you can see from top to toe but Hopefully a picture that I took from their website, you'll see kind of how long it's meant to be and how it falls. And I should get a shot of this area. <laughs> uh, I have a bit of a, a tough relationship with this dress because I... So I'm trying to calm my voice and calm down. My last video was so fast and speedy and I... I'm a bit overexcited. <laughs> Okay, yes, the, um, the dress and I have a tough relationship because it was a nightmare to use in the machine because it's so flowy and difficult to get through the machine basically. I, I think it's just because I'm not very experienced, I'm still learning, so new fabrics to me are always like, oh, how do I do this, how do I do this? But It'll be fine eventually. I did make the peppermint pocket skirt which I wore two episodes ago and that's the same fabric and that was fine. So I think it was just this fabric for the first time. I had trouble with the zip but since then I have learned how to do this style of zip but I don't know what it's called but you basically have to insert it midway through and it was a completely different style of zip than I've ever done and I didn't know I couldn't read the instructions, I didn't understand. But since then I found a video, so when I make this again, which I will, um, I will use that video to do it. Um, and I didn't sew it together high enough, so it's a bit busty, it's a bit open, which isn't so great Like if you go out <laughs> into the real world and say you lean over and pick up your bag or you go to the supermarket and pick up something from the shelf, it just, it, it doesn't leave much to the imagination, let's say that. And I don't know if it was this fabric or me not doing my seam allowances correctly, but 
I'm not sure the bus darts line up properly, so I don't know, it just doesn't quite work in this area. But alas, I decided during the summer I was going to wear it for a nice summer evening, summer walk, and I put sun cream on and then somehow between putting sun cream on here and moving my hand, I smeared a little bit of the sun cream right across the boob and it's an oil based sun cream so it just stained and I tried using all the, all the things, all the things to get rid of the stain to lift the oil and it just didn't. I was so upset and uh, it's basically been banished to the other room for the whole of summer, the whole of autumn and until today. I thought, I never wear this, such a waste. I've ironed it a thousand times because as soon as you touch it, it wrinkles. So I'm constantly ironing it thinking I'll wear it, I'll wear it for a special occasion. There's never a time that I do anything that's a fancy, that I'm gonna go out in a fancy dress, and not fancy dress, but a fancy dress. And if it's summer, I have now learned you cannot wear sun cream with this. So that one's out. And if I sit outside on my balcony in the evening, I'm not gonna wear a dress that is so delicate on a wooden chair that would, you just know it's gonna snag or something will happen. So I've now decided it's winter, I can throw a jumper on, that covers up the, the part of the dress that has the issues and I can just wear it <laughs> and enjoy it. And worst comes to worst, at some point, I'll um, dismantle it and use it for something else. So that, that's the dress. <laughs> I don't think I sold it very well, but when I show you the, uh, the second version I made, hopefully you will be sold on it because it's a lovely dress. And I do recommend making it. Just don't do it if you're a beginner and try and wing it all. Um, what else? Ah oh, yes, next finished object. It, <laughs> it has baffled me slightly. I basically made, you'll know from my last episode, I started making some scrappy socks. Uh, there's really nothing to show. I wanted to put them on sock lockers, but they don't fit. I don't have a clue what I have done to these socks, but they're so small. I can't imagine that I've suddenly become a tight knitter, but Every other sock is too big, and this one is too... I mean, it's not too small that it doesn't fit me, but it doesn't fit over my sock lockers. It's 56 stitches. They are slightly um, shorter. They're not quite shorties, but they are shorter than my normal socks. Again, absolutely no idea why. I... I don't know. I use this yarn. It's the Phil Kalana Arbetta. I use this yarn plenty of times. And, uh, Apparently I just did not do my notes very well. Um, they seem to have come out different sizes, but it's not noticeable, except I've locked one and not the other, so now it's incredibly noticeable. But one fit over the sock blocker, but just like it really stretched down. The other one just, no, was not gonna happen. It's using some scrappy leftovers that I got from uh, Mayflower. DK. I made my husband some socks with this, this one, they were stripy, and I just used them up, and annoyingly I still have sock leftovers, like they're still there, they just don't disappear. And yesterday, or the day before actually, I was knitting away on my foot, I use a tally chart, I'm very old fashioned, I have a piece of scrap paper and a pen, whenever I am knitting I just do a, um, what do you even call them, <laughs> the four lines and then a line across uh, for the fifth one. So I always know, okay, I did 35 rows on sock one, I need to do 35 rows on sock two, and I managed to completely misread my own notes and got to the foot, did however many apparently that I had written down, then I decreased for the toe, used my kitchener stitch, cast it off, cut all the ends, wove them all in, put it on my foot, did not go on my foot. 
heat was too small by about two inches. <laughs> so I had to undo all of that. I um, used a needle and some scrappy sock yarn and I uh, wove in, like I, I kind of did a makeshift light, what is it called? Lifeline. And for the first time actually it worked, I managed to pick up every single stitch and not lose one or pick up too many. You can see it a little bit but I haven't blocked them yet so it'll probably um, wash out. So I picked up that unwound all of the toe up to just before I started the decrease and um, knitted an extra what I thought was the correct amount and they're still too small <laughs> I did put them on but I thought this one apparently has 42 rows for the foot and I was already on 45 and it was too small but I thought I can't do more otherwise they're gonna be so 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 different and when I lay them next to each other before I blocked one and not the other they were fine so I honestly have no idea <laughs> what happened but they fit physically so that's fine and I'll block them after I record and pull on the smaller one and see but I'm a bit frustrated now that I've, ma I've managed to block one on the sock blocker and it's stretched it out and the other one's still super small but alas let's just talk about the sock very quickly 56 stitches unknown length I have partridge heel using the contrasting colour miscellaneous foot length then I think it's called a square toe where you knit two before the stitch marker you knit two together knit one slip the sti slip the stitch marker knit one SSK knit do the same and then you knit a row and then you do that up until you have in my case 12 stitches left and then you kitchen and stitch them together I have done the round toe I think it's called where you pull it at the end like a hat but I don't like it as much Phys like to physically on my foot it feels fine oh wow <laughs> today is just difficult to talk apparently but um, I prefer the look of this one I think that's all I have to say about these socks I will go and block them and pull them all kinds of ways and um, hopefully they will fit <sighs> next work in progress I only have one that I'm actively doing I did attempt to work on my mitten but I don't know something went I could I can't understand basically the same issue I had last time I've got this issue with the thumb and I just can't understand the instructions and the I printed out the colour work pattern but it's so small and even if I look at it on my phone it's so small I can't actually physically see with ease the colour work charm so I think I'm going to have to either draw it out by hand or somehow manage to blow it up on the computer and print it but it'll be so blurry so I'm, I'm working on that it might end up being a project I do next well not next year but um, November time we shall see it depends it's sitting there waiting for attention I tried to give it attention and um, yeah it's just too difficult for me to read the colour work chart and I don't understand what I'm doing <laughs> but the project I do know what I'm doing is my fox sweater uh, I've got to be careful as I said Plutolope has to come with you at all times so it doesn't break I have two colours at the moment um, let's see hopefully that shows up this is theoretically at the moment for my mum. I've done the size four, but I'm not sure. I have to check my gauge to see if I'm on, on point. But if it doesn't fit her, I'll wear it. If it's too, like if it's the right size, obviously she'll get it. This is a pattern called Into the Wild by The Wool Barrow 
on Instagram and I believe her name is Tanya Bali. It's knitted in two, um, not two, in one strand of Plutilopi, which <sighs> it's not easy, let's put it that way. I really love the pattern, but the uh, increases that you have to do with a single strand of Plutilopi is a bit nerve-wracking. It's such thin yarn and you have to nerve-wracking but doable. So far I've been okay. I think I think I'm done on the increases on the yoke. It'll just be the increases for the body I assume. Um, I am on row 30 of 40 on the colour work so I'm nearly done on the colour work and then it'll be just green and green arms. I believe there's a little bit of colour work on the sleeves and the bottom of the hem. We'll see if I do that. I don't know why, but sometimes when I get to the bottom, I just think, no, nope, <laughs> I've done the colour work. I'm over that now. But we'll see. <laughs> um, it does have some rows with three colours. I am like a moth to a flame. When I see colour work patterns, I think, oh, that's beautiful, I need to make it. And then at some point along the uh, knitting, I realise, oh no, <laughs> three colours again. So that was a bit tricky because again, single strands of Plutilopi, you have to make sure you carry them but you don't ever pull or tug because it'll break um, and make sure you catch them all. Yeah, but I think I've only got one or maybe two rows left of holding all three. And then it's back to two and then it's back just to one. <laughs> and then oh, smooth sailing until the end. Um, what else can I say about it? Yeah, I haven't checked the gauge, but I hope it's right. Um, the colours I'll link below if you're interested. They are slightly different from the ones on the um, picture. But I, I went with a, like a darker grey for the, I don't even know what they are, the foresty part, <laughs> um, and the eyes and the ears. I went for a darker grey, which is actually a bit bluish in tone, which I wasn't expecting, but now that it's knitted up, it's fine. But it's not a great contrast with the green, but I don't think it will matter because there's not a lot going on with the green and the grey. I just thought black might be too black, like too stark. But maybe one day I'll do it again and I'll add black, who knows. But anyway, it's very nice. I'm very happy. <laughs> and hopefully, if it does go well, I will make myself one. I have enough yarn, I think, for myself, but whilst I'm knitting it, I'm not sure that I want to do it again in Plutilopi. If, by some miracle, I can figure out how to get the gauge with another yarn, I think I will, because although I love how Plutilopi feels, I don't enjoy single strand and um, increases and holding three colours. So, we'll see. <laughs> that is my work in progress. You've seen my finished. That's all I've been doing to be honest. I, I have lots of plans but I haven't started them yet. I do have some yarn here that's all prepared and ready. These are all Phil Colana Arveta sock yarns. I want to make the little acorn socks by Stone Knits. So that's what they're sitting there for because I want to cast them on now. Well, not now, after I talk to you guys. Um, I'm just gonna take a drink because my throat is super sore and dry. gonna cast them on and I think the colours are fine. I wanted more of a red for a red squirrel because I like red squirrels but there's no point in me going online and ordering one skein of yarn because we all know you never end up with one skein, you always need more and also I'd have to pay postage. <sighs> I'm paying like five euro postage for three euro or whatever it is. Skein, that isn't a skein, I don't know what these are called, 
not skein, not at all, of yarn, that's just not going to happen. So they're going to be brown, brown squirrels. Don't even know if you get brown squirrels. They're like grey or red, but it doesn't matter. That is what I'm going to make. If it looks terrible, it's a sock, so no one's going to care, to be honest. They are probably going to be for my mum, but if I enjoy the pattern, then I'll just make some for her and some for me. And I also have the yarn ready and waiting for my um, Into the Woods socks. So depending how well or how how fast these go, I'll cast them on afterwards. Um, I'm still umming and ahhing over my Easter Bunny socks because it's also a stone knits pattern, but I believe it's called a Fish Lips Kiss Heel that I did, and I hate it. I hate it so much. I hate doing it, and I hate how it looks. And I did the colour work, and I just got nearly to the end of it. I think I talk about it in my second, maybe, um, episode. Got nearly to the end and I was like, I'm done with this colour work. So I made the toe. I started the colour, plain colour, early. And I just hate how it looks. And so I think I might have to rip it back up to the bunny, like past the heel. And then start the heel and do a normal, <laughs> my normal, eye of partridge heel. So I'm trying to get enthusiasm to do this because I don't want to do it. But I'm not knitting the second one because I don't want to do that heel and therefore it just sits there and it's been sitting there for months. So I have to do something. So I think I'll do this sock first and then with post enthusiasm of achieving another colourwork sock I'll then tackle the Easter Rabbit sock. I've got until April, so <laughs> hopefully I can muster up the enthusiasm by then. And other than that, the other two things I've been doing, haven't tried this on yet, but if you recall, I'm not sure when I talked about it, but I'm having some issues with a few of my necklines because I was doing a Norwegian pearl and it was coming out too loose, and so all my ribbing for my socks and my necklines that I did in that phase were all a bit too loose. So I bought some elastic thread that I have um, sewn in or woven in through and I'm going to see if that pulls it together. I've done three rows and I followed a YouTube that I'll link below because I cannot remember. Um, I don't, it doesn't look any different but maybe it'll be different when it's on. But I've got three jumpers that I need to fix um, because I really want to make another Felix pullover but I can't tell if the neckline is loose because the pattern is like that or it was just my knitting. I think it's my knitting. So I do have some more yarn for, um, for that. <laughs> I don't know why today I'm struggling. Um, I have some more yarn to do a Felix but I'm going to um, just make sure that I can fix it before I do another one. Hopefully this will work. This is my Christmas pulley. And if you recall from ever seeing it, it just it goes across a little bit too much. So hopefully that's worked. And my next plans other, on the, other than knitting are sewing. I bought some new fabric that technically was like it was reduced, my usual fabric is around eight euro a meter. That's the cheapest I can find, a nice quality um, fabric. And I just want some fabric that's cheap so that I can practice um, getting the fit right. Like my hinterland dress, love it, but it's too small in just, just here. And I need to play around with it, but I can't get my hands on any cheaper fabric. That's completely natural. I don't want... Um, uh, I can help. Wow, today is really, really hard to talk. I don't want plasticky, nylon-y, polyester -y fabric. I want cotton just to practice on. And it's always just about eight euro. So I found some fabric that was four euro fifty a meter, so I grabbed some of that. Um, but then it arrived, I'll try and set a video, 
and I've kind of fallen in love with them all and I don't, <laughs> I don't know how to use them as scrap now because I want to genuinely make dresses with them. So let's hope that the adjustments I make are a success and so when the dress does come out as a um, toile or a muslin it will um, actually be a successful one. Because I want to do another hinterland dress in three versions, the same, basically the same one I did before but with shorter sleeves, one that has no sleeves and one that has some buttons but I just need to figure out this armhole situation. And I also want to do another dress by Rosary Apparel. She has a Rosa dress, which I love. It was the very first dress I tried to make. I um, used my old curtains, but I don't think I understood seam allowances and it all came out of bizarre um, size and shape. But I'd never sewn any garment. I'd never, I didn't understand seam allowances. I, I couldn't, figure out at the time how to look at my where the needle was going into the fabric and line it up with the um, side and keep it going straight so all of my lines are like this. <laughs> so it was probably why the dress didn't quite fit. And it was made in upholstery fabric basically so it was super thick which made all the um, seams really thick. So I'm going to give that another go. and. Yeah, I have basically lots of dresses I want to make and I also have an issue that I don't know if any of you guys who sew can help me out on but when I used to live in New Zealand I bought these Lululemon, Lululemon leggings. I was just bragging to my husband about how marvellous it is that they've lasted me so long. It's been about 10 years or 11 years and I then went and did yoga in them, and I do wear them regularly, but exactly in that yoga session, they broke. <laughs> so yeah, there's the leg. It's in the leg, not the bottom, like my friend thought. And I've now discovered that these are not sewn, they're kind of glued. I don't know if I can get this in focus. Um, yeah, so I'm not really sure how to put them back together. I don't know if there's a special fabric uh, glue or fabric, it's like double sided tape almost, but for fabric. So I need to figure out how to put them back together because the rest of them are all perfectly fine. It's just there. So if any of you know of how to fix these, I will be very grateful. <laughs> and I think that is everything. If I try and talk anymore, it will just be a load of waffle because apparently that's how I am feeling today. <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully it hasn't been too fast or sped up or blah, 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 but that seems to be how I am. So um, I'm not sure when I'll record next. We'll see how much knitting I get done. Um, this is obviously going to take me quite a while. And yeah, my socks generally take about two weeks or three, depending. So. Yeah, I'm not going to put any pressure on putting out very, very, see, very regular podcasts because I knit when I want to knit and uh, I'm not actually on any deadlines. So hopefully I can catch up with you soon, but um, otherwise in three, four weeks, we'll see. <laughs> so um, thank you very much for watching. If you liked this video, a um, like would be marvellous. I know it's I get frustrated when people say this all the time, but it genuinely helps and it helps other people who could be interested in this content find you, well, find me. And um, that would be lovely because I'd, lo I'd love to connect to more of you. So. Yeah, let's, let's wrap this up. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching and I will see you again next time. Bye. -bye.